are recording now. Perfect. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to our popular office hours. Uh, was it January 25th, 2022? Uh, happy to have you. We have a code of conduct. Please be excellent to each other. Um, and I think that's already it. Uh, Thor wants to give the first update on the columnar store. Sure. Um, I guess I don't know what was said last time. So some of this might be redundant, and I'll just apologize about any redundancies. But um, we're making great progress on the in-memory columnar store um, that is hopefully going to replace the in-memory store Parka has right now. Um, hopefully it should be more space efficient and faster and give us better uh, query times. Um, we are almost feature complete with the insertion of uh, single threaded data. So we have splitting and compaction both working uh, for single threads. And then we need to add isolation so that it can actually handle uh, concurrent requests. Um, most of this is contained in the Park RFC 001, uh, which lays out uh, basically what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to accomplish it. Um, but our next, yeah, our next task will be benchmarking what we have um, and then adding isolation and performance improvements off of that. And I think that's a, it for my update. Any questions? Sorry, Try, trying to figure out the, the right sequence of buttons I have to press. Um, so awesome. Thank you for the update, Thor. Uh, did I pronounce your name correctly, Thor? Yeah, like, that's correct. The, the, the guy from, yeah. Okay. The guy with the hammer. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm always focusing on trying out things and with a kind of like UX perspective, like how does it look and feel? Not so much like, you know, UI, or whatever, but really like, you know, I imagine I'm trying to use that in a, in a some use case for, for some serious setup. It's like, okay, does that feel right? Is something missing? It's like, oh, that might be another, you know, parameter or, or whatever. Um, or here's something how we can make it easier, whatever. So I'm always interested in how can I get started? How can I test it as early as possible? Even if it's very, very like, you know, rough and, and might require some, you know, plumbing or whatever. So if you can either, uh, it doesn't have to be right away, but, you know, either through through Discord or like wherever you, you want to um, have a, a quick, like, you know, hey, if you want to try it out, here are the things you need to do, one, two, three, um, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will post something in a Discord that uh, you can follow to just get started and kick the tires, so to speak. That sounds great. Thank you for the suggestion. Froze for a second, but the thumbs up was clearly visible then. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's just follow up if there's any anything else to run, uh, to make it runnable. Um, all right. Uh, and then, yeah, Mecca, you're actually second on the agenda. You wanted to talk about uh, specifying personas in the documentation, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So two things that came to mind. Like if you look at the at the current web page of the docs, right? They're really great. They're, they're very, very, you know, clear and, and well written, attention to detail and everything. The uh, challenge that I find is if you come from it without all the context, right? Without knowing what things are and, and whatnot, you typically come to a project with a certain expectation, right? You're either like, oh, like, that's a cool tool. I want to use it in my podcast. Or you go like, well, I'm looking for a new open source project. I want to start contributing. Like, where, where can I start? And depending on that, and anything in between, depending on that, you might be interested in different things, right? The, the person who uses that is more like, okay, tell me exactly the steps. Give me the YAML. Give me this. Give me Helm. Give me whatever. Whereas the person who wants to contribute is like, okay, how does that, you know, what is that lib PPF and what is BTF and, and, you know, core and this and that, like how, how do all these things play together and architecture and, 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 you know, what do I need to do to test it and, and whatnot. And to improve that, this kind of 
um, oh, by the way, you know, this page is for you as a developer or, um, you know, it could be many things. It could be, you know, some project have it like extreme, right? It's like, this is the end user documentation. This is development or developer documentation. Um, others um, say it in the top saying like, you know, this is, this page is mainly for relevant for developers. You can have tags or labels at the bottom or the top saying like, you know, this is relevant for both developers and end users or whatever. I guess all I'm saying is that um, the content itself, I don't think needs a lot of, of massaging. It's really just more making it explicit, easier to understand and guide folks to, to see, you know, is that relevant for me or not? And, and you know, um, make, it, make it easier to consume and, and being able to ignore things that are not relevant for the task or role at hand, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, kind of like just started out writing everything together, like we <laughs> mixed up a bunch of things, right? So I think it's it's a really good suggestion. Um, and as per discussion on, on Discord, I think um, we don't want to have this like super hard separation between the content. So I think like um, like somehow tagging the pages with like uh, who these pages are for uh, was kind of the, the agreed upon way to go forward. Should we discuss real quick how that would look um, a bit more specific? Like do we have, have just like like these like UI pills in mind that, that are somewhere on the page or like how like what, what are the ideas for, for making that visible? Good question. As I said, I agree with your assessment. Like I, I don't think that you want to really separate that, but if there is are you using the Docker Sauro thing and the other, I don't know that document system. Well, uh, if it's like simple, if it's just like, you know, um, if you look at, I don't know, Hugo or Jekyll or whatever, where you have uh, a tag in the beginning at the top somewhere, like in the blurb where you say like, okay, you know, tag it as developer focused and user focused or whatever. And that would be nicely rendered somewhere. Maybe that's like, I, I don't know what is possible, but tagging it is kind of like, you know, or labels. That's that's something we we know how to do, to use, right? Labels, right? So why not? I, I, but yeah. I, I don't really have a, I'm not a, a tech writer. I, I don't know how to go about it. That's just what I would love to see mm -hmm. as, as a consumer of that to, to somehow get some guidance. I, I don't know what, what's possible. Yeah, no, I think something like that should be possible from what I've seen with uh, Docker Saros. And um, my, my other kind of like follow-up question on, on that regard would be like, do you want to be able to filter by these tags somehow like just show me like in the navigation only the the pages right. with a specific tag or yes. is it just not enough content yet that it doesn't really matter or something like that i can give you i can give you an example of like ignore the content everything i'm, I'm purely mm -hmm. talking about the um the navigational right yeah. so if you look at this it's just one example workshop that we have there in this case it's about EKS. And we had the same problem there. Um, how do we, for very specific um, things, like imagine a, I don't know, a, a training at reInvent or whatever, how do we like reuse, reshuffle the content, right? And if you look at the lower left part where it says more, you see certain things like con two or three, as that was probably some reInvent uh, training session or whatever, right? And if you look at it, or if you click on the text, essentially using, using these tags to pull together the content. Right. That are labeled with that con two, two or three, you know, that's that's how you essentially on the fly can compile a concrete course. And having these tags, I don't know to what extent you want to, you know, make them visible and, and discoverable and, and whatnot, but some some way to say like, like if I, for example, say like, can I please get only the developer related pages? I would, you know, click on the developer and then, you know, he, here is the subset of pages that are, you know, only or, or mostly relevant for development. Like you should really look at that, right? Whereas uh, user, end user, I would say like, you know, it would only show me the, the end user pages and maybe, you know, not, not necessarily the dev pages. I, I, it's hard to say because who says that the developer 
who wants to contribute to it also doesn't you know, has another role at the same time wanting to use it, but you know what I mean? It's like you, you can filter for the one or the other and then only see the pages that are relevant. That's one way to go about it. But again, I, I don't know what Docosaurus can do there. At least flag it. Go, yeah, we can. We can we can try things that's for sure and I I really like the suggestion with the tagging and automatic like kind of like content creation through these tags and yeah I mean like you are not bound to one one tag you can always click around and it's just like another way of discovering things um, so yeah I, I really I really like it and uh, we'll we'll definitely open an issue with these details and then we'll follow up. And try to see how how easy or hard it is to in, uh, to implement something with Docker Saurus. I think it should be should be possible for sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and cool. I, yeah. I guess like we we don't even have like a strong opinion on that because like after all we write this for others, right? Like the documentation. So whatever like people people have on their mind, they can just bring forward. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for this, uh, for the topic. Um, and then I think Manoj isn't here, but Yomi is, and uh, we are exporting UI packages to NPM and we want to learn about how that works because yeah. it's really cool and automated. Yes. Hi everyone. Um, nice to be here for my first pack of office hours. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to like quickly give an update on how we, recently integrated learner into our monorepo um, for Parker and how like we automate all of our publishing our UI components to NPM. Um, so we actually wanted to like be able to reuse some of the components that we currently have in the UI um, for Parker, um, mostly just because so we can use them in other projects. Um, um, for example, like the profile viewing libraries, if you want to like be able to like use them in other projects, all you need to do is just like download it from NPM and um, use it in your project. So to be able to do that, we had to, first of all, integrate Lena um, with YAN workspaces. Um, if you don't know what Lena is, Lena is basically a tool that helps you like manage monorepos. Um, it's kind of similar to YAN workspaces, but the good thing is that they're able to like work together and you know do all of the managing your packages and publishing them. So we were able to do that. Um, actually, we didn't just, Settle on learner from like the start. We had like um like an internal RFC, and we looked at some alternatives. We looked at Rush.js. Rush.js is also another to like learner, but it doesn't really play well with um, YAN workspaces, which we already use for our front end. So we had to go with um, learner, um, and um, learner and YAN workspaces seems to be like a very popular combination that's used in the front end community. So that really helps. Like if we have problem or issues in the in the future, we can easily check, you know, blog posts or go to like the GitHub issues or yeah, that's really helpful. So we're able to do all of that. Um, we integrated learner into our um, monorepo and then we also had to integrate it with them um, GitHub actions. So what that means is that every time a pull request is merged into the main branch on the Packer repository, um, Lena will go into our UI directory and check for if there's been like any um, recent changes to any of the packages that we highlight, we highlighted should be published. And if you see that there are changes, what it does is that it creates a new version. Um, we use um, we use semantic versioning um, for versioning our um, UI component. So it does that. It automatically updates the versions based on if it was a major release or a minor change or something like that. And then when when it does that, it actually publishes all of that um, to to npm and as an end user you can easily just do npm install at packer slash profile and you can use the components in your your project so yeah that's what we were able to do with learn and github actions um it's actually only run once automatically since because we actually haven't really made a lot of changes to the ui component system but i think going forward right now like any change we made um that should like result in um, an automatic publishing to to NPM. So yeah. Anyone have any questions? Um, I know it's not really a front end populated office hours today, but if anyone has like questions, I'll be happy to answer. 
I'm not smart enough to answer, ask any questions, but I just appreciate the update because it sounds really cool, um, all that. And yeah, I'm not a front-end guy, so that's it's always cool to hear what's going on there. Nice, nice. Yes, Matthias, um, um, actually, a blog post is in the works, and we should be able to like you know, put that out soon for people to read too. So, yeah. Really cool. Um, yeah, I think if there aren't any other questions, we can open it up to like a general Q and A about anything Parker profiling. Um, anything that comes to mind. Now's the time. Up until in two weeks, <laughs> till we until we meet again. Anything that that's worth discussing. Um, like you, you mean beyond the, the agenda that we had in the, in the Google docs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had more like a, like general question again, apologies if I overlooked that somewhere, but in terms of, do we already have a kind of fixed release cadence or whatever, or is it still more like, oh yeah, we, we cut a new release whenever we feel like, or we have, or we have something new, new cool to share or whatever. It's mostly about like. I'm not suggesting or recommending any any anything aggressive. It's more about predictability, right? So think of of you know um, my customers or whatever, and they ask certain things, and you're like, okay, if I know, yes, you know, no matter what, every month they will, or every two weeks or whatever. Versus, yep, you know, we are still in this. Yeah, there will be a new release when there is enough there to to you know warrant a new release. Good. Yeah, really good question. Um... So I think we briefly discussed having like a similar, like everything in this project to some degree inspired by Prometheus and Prometheus has this like six week, uh, six weeks release cycle. Um, but I think like, if I remember correctly, we started our first version in October and that's been like what, four or five months. Um, and since we had like seven releases. So um, I think right now we are like releasing and publishing releases even more often than just six weeks. So I don't think that we have the need to enforce any like specific cadence just yet. And kind of the way we are handling this is just if there's something um, kind of like accumulated over like one or two weeks, then we just throw it out there and, and, and make the release um, as everything's automated. Like the, the barrier to do that is pretty low. And that makes perfect sense, right? I'm, I'm again just to clarify. I'm not advocating for or recommending a, a fixed cadence just mm -hmm. for the sake of it. I mean, you know, that's uh, the, the best example here is the Linux kernel, right? Like, you know, <laughs> there was some I don't know two years between two dot one and two dot two or whatever, and then you know within a month, you know, you know, released I don't know fifteen <laughs> different versions. Who knows? I, there's everything right with that approach. I guess all I'm saying is if if you go, for example, to the community page and it says our release policy is exactly what you just said, mm -hmm. right? Then that is clear, it's explicitly communicated. Otherwise, right. well, it's kind of like tribal knowledge. It's like, you know, we know it here. And if someone stumbles upon the community or office hours notes, it, it might be there, but it's kind of like it's not clear um, what to expect. Mm -hmm. And and again, I'm not saying the one is good or the other one is good, or you know, it has pros, all all of these things have pros and cons. As long as you're explicit about it, it's clear. It says it. Yep. You know, uh, don't don't bother saying like, uh, you know, oh, you haven't been releasing something for two weeks. What's wrong with you? I'm still alive? Yep. Versus, um, you know, uh, it, again, it has pros and cons. Just being explicit about it sets expectations right, and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, easy. And most of the things that I'm I'm calling out is really just being explicit about things, making making things clear and easy to discover, and and you know. Um, reducing the load to so the core maintainers also to, you know if you need to yeah. answer the same question fifteen times that's kind <laughs> of like you can do better things than that right you, yeah you, then you, done use that. your time more I wisely <laughs> yeah no I I agree and it's it's like anything that really comes up um, that you discover like these thought, sorts of things just point them out and we we should just add all of this to 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 the documentation to make it discoverable and. For people to just know what's up uh, without asking the same question 15 times as you said so yeah we we should uh, add this and as i said like 
just kind of like in terms of yeah, the content for that is probably like we don't have a fixed cadence. We released more than on a monthly basis, and that's roughly what people can expect right now. So I think that's what we can put in there as well. That's good. Just making it explicit sounds good as well. Yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you. Ready. That's all I had. Any anything else? I guess then that's that's it for today. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the week and see you then. And thank you for joining. Bye. 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 Bye.